Happy Homebrew Wednesday, folks. Ryan Patrick Murphy here, drinking a little homebrew. Look at that. Look at that. A little sand dune cream ale. I believe this is from Adventures in Homebrewing. Uh, it sat in primary for several months, but hey, you know what? It came out pretty good. I like it. It's a nice, light, easy drinking beer. I'm not sure if you can see me very well. Maybe I need to... Hey, look, there's more light. <laughs> uh, just uh, brewing some beer right now, actually. That's why I'm wearing my brewer shirt from Infusion Brewing here. Well, not here. Across the river in Nebraska. Um, brewing a dry Irish stout. Trying to have, hopefully, have it ready by St. Patrick's Day. If not, you know, then it won't be. Uh, the uh, boiler is at 211 degrees. We're almost at the boil. Let's take a look here. It might actually technically be boiling at this point. I still have one of the old controllers on the grandfather. Hey, still works. Why would I replace it? The new ones are kind of cool, though. We got a lot of foam here. Uh, this is a pretty simple recipe. It's actually in Beersmith. I modified it a little bit. Um, so it's, it's actually, if you open up beer, if you have Beersmith and you open it up, you, you can go look online too in the Beersmith cloud. Um, it's just called Dry Stout. Uh, they. Um, Use uh, five five pounds of two row, two pounds of lake barley, a pound of roasted barley, um, two ounces, two point two five ounces, I think, of East Kent Golden hops. Uh, uh, oh, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna boil over if I'm not careful. So let's here, maybe I can show you some of the fun here. Look at that. She's going to go crazy. You know, some people, when I got this, they're like, well, how, what about boil overs? How do you handle those? You know, you can't move the pot off the heat. Well, and, uh, you know, it's kind of, I could just unplug it, but there'll still be heat from the element until it cools down. But it's such a, a slow heat. You know, it gets hot so slowly that stirring it usually will save your bacon. But you got to make sure you're paying attention to what's going on. But you know what they say, a watch pot never boils, but an unwatched pot always boils over. So I always got to keep stirring and stirring, get through the hot break here. I don't remember how long it took for it to get to a boil. Felt like a while though. Some reason and I don't put the lid on uh, that does speed it up but there's no handle on the lid so it, you very likely to burn yourself if you don't have a, a mitt or something another mitt or something I'm gonna... <laughs> now I'm kind of all over the place see it's been a while since I've done this so actually I suppose I could just do more of the brewing here I only have another step to do Sorry, folks. <laughs> it's totally all over the place. It's all right, though. So I got this nifty hop spider. I don't think anyone's seen me use it yet. Um, we're, you can see we're through our hot break. I don't have to worry about a boil over at this point. So I'm going to put this in here. It hooks onto the side. See? It, just enough so things can't overflow out of it. So, in the recipe, um, the recipe calls for 2.25 ounces of East Kent Goldings. That 5% alpha acid, which yields about 46 and a half IBUs, I believe, if I remember correctly. I had 3.8% alpha acid East Kent Goldings. So, to get the IBUs to where they need to be, I pretty much I'm going to use all three ounces, which is good because I hate opening up a package of hops and only using some of it. 
So now if nothing works, you need a quarter of an ounce or something. And these are you can see they're three dollars a pop. I don't know if you can see that. So it's kind of pricey. You spend nine dollars on hops, and then you only can use part of them. Ugh. Need some scissors. I need to get my timer going too. So, just cut this up. The hot spider is kind of annoying to clean if you don't have a hose of some sort, which I just installed one on my faucet this week, so this, that'll be pretty handy. But it's nice not to have as much junk in the bottom of the boiler when I'm done brewing. that in there. Also, I was a little strategic. Uh, fiance is out of the house today. She's actually at her parents' house this weekend. Today's actually Sunday. I know, it's homebrew Wednesday, but it's Sunday uh, when I'm recording. But uh, So she doesn't like the smell. She said, I've only brewed once since we moved in here. And she, she doesn't like the smell, I discovered. But she didn't banish me out to the garage or anything, which is good because I couldn't run my my grandfather out there because it's I don't have 20 amps service out there. In fact, the kitchen and the bathroom are the only spots that have 20 amps. So she was a good sport, but I appreciate that. She's tried some of my beer, and it seems like she likes it for the most part. You know, she, she's not a big drinker by any means. But she'll try it, and usually says it tastes good, so that's cool. Alright, so that's going to boil for an hour. i got to clean some, get a carboy cleaned up, and i got my airlock and a sanitizer. Well, that's a moral flock. Oh, also I did modify, like I said, I'm all over the place. I haven't done this in a while. So original recipe, five pounds of two row, two pounds flake barley, one pound roasted barley. I actually did increase because with the three ounces of hops, um, it, it was about one IBU over, which actually really isn't a big deal. And I really didn't care about that. But I noticed the ABV came out to like 3.7%. So I added another pound of two row which brought it to like 4.2, hopefully. And that actually brought it more into the style of a dry stout, even according to Beersmith, which is funny that they have a dry stout recipe that does not f totally fall into line with being a dry stout. But I've pretty much fixed that, adding another pound of two row. Um, it didn't really change the color. It didn't appear to change the color too much. You saw it in there, it looks like a pretty dark beer. It smells like a roasting coffee in here right now. It smells really, really good. So, hopefully it turns out alright. I'm sure it will. Uh, it's a pretty simple brew. If it tastes good, um, I'd, I'd recommend it to, to you to brew it on your own. And really, I haven't even tasted it and I'm sure it'll be fine. So, if you're looking for a, a stout to brew, try that one out. Just go to Beersmith Cloud and look up Dry Stout. Um, what else do I got going on? Uh, we have Karma Citra Session IPA in primary right now. Uh, I need to get that moved into a secondary and dry hopped. And I may still do that yet tonight. And I have cream ale on tap and still have some rhubarb ale, which I'm hoping gets cleared out because um, I, I need a place to put my new beer. Also, the rhubarb, great recipe, awesome recipe. I, I like the beer, but it is if you don't get that rhubarb strained out right or anything, that you find rhubarb fibers all throughout everything. It just gets stuck in places. It, it's kind of annoying, so I don't think I'm going to brew that one again, but it, it was a good beer. I did appreciate Brett for sharing. Uh, I did appreciate Brett sharing that recipe with me. So, uh, Cheers, everybody. 
We'll catch you next time. 17, I'm out.